What's up, everybody? It's your favorite cleanest vehicle with dirty tires, favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Transformer Studio Series Masterpiece Bone Crusher. This is on loan to me by Scott M. Shout out to him. I do appreciate him more than you guys know. Very, very generous guy. Anyway, that being said, we are going to take a look at this, but we do have to talk about accessories. And I want to make sure that we get the one accessory connected before we talk about vehicle mode, because obviously it has a huge impact on how we kind of perceive the vehicle and what the purpose of the vehicle is. So let's go ahead and get into that and then we'll get into the vehicle so to speak so he comes with all of this these two here you can put them together they are kind of an optional uh assortment all of these bits here are on ball pegs they don't really have a huge range of motion on them but they have enough of a range of motion where you can kind of at least splay them out a bit you know which is fine. We'll set that to the side. Then we have this, right? So this is the armature. This is what connects to the truck, this end. And then these two, you have these ends that you connect those pieces on. Easy for me to say. And then you can connect them here. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. Right? And then there's a number of different things you can do with this, but I'll wait until we get to the vehicle mode to show you. And then you just connect this onto here. You know, and then there's a number of different things you can do. We'll talk about it when we get to the vehicle mode. For robot mode, you want the fork split as well. And you just clip in once the transformation's done. And you have it just sort of sit along his back, however you kind of prefer, honestly. You have two different faceplate options. One is kind of like just the normal one, and then one is like the battle damage one, which keeps up with the motif of the fire and stuff, which we'll get here to here actually right now. You have a series of six different pieces of orange, translucent plastic, and they peg into them, uh, so to speak. I'll show you where all that is. They're all identical. I'm not in, in terms of their shape and where they peg in and stuff, but they're all identical in the sense of orange translucent plastic that thins towards the weaker points. So you have a peg here on the side. You got this one that sits flat. That's a good indicator for where that one goes. And then on his left hip, there is a female connection point there. And I don't know which way this goes, honestly. Let's try this way. Yeah, that way. So the flame's kind of facing the back. You've got a Y-shaped one with a very particular shaped key on the pelvis. And that goes there. Moving on to his right arm, we have a peg on this one. And that goes up and over the shoulder. You also have this one that has like the C-clip. The C-clip wraps around one of these pipes here. And you can probably make it whichever one you want, honestly. But I have it on the bottom one there. And then you have the last one, which is kind of the beefier one. That goes on the other arm using that female connection there. And there's vehicle mode. So let's go ahead and get Tiger Tracks out of the way. There he is next to Tiger Tracks. So very large truck. Very, very large indeed. All right, now let's have a look. We'll save this bit for last. We have the pad printed paint here for the Bone Crusher symbol. We have <clears throat> some really nice paint on the tires. Uh, the tires are also apparently made by Megatron's tire brand. So I'm sure that's in the licensing agreement between those two. We have some paint applications, very, very minimal paint applications. Some brown dry brushing on the tires, that's great. Some brown wash on these grates here. A couple of accents along the way for turn signals and headlights, along with, it looks like a sticker or a pad printed paint there for the front. And then a little bit of wash on the back here where it's where it has all this kind of like, I don't know, pimp, F pimp, whatever, dude. And then we have red paint here and red and white paint there. Oh, and actually that, that whole piece there is painted. Um, <clears throat> so let me tell you what irritates me about this. 
So the tires have seen action, right? They've been out there doing it. And it shows. The wear and tear shows. Uh, however, <laughs> nothing else is dirty on this thing. <laughs> except for the back. They got a little bit of dirt on the back. In fact, it's so bizarre because they had dirt on the windshield that the windshield wipers are, are cleaning. And that's nice of them. Uh, but only on the front. No dirt on these. Or somebody washed these and was like, ah, I got forgotten and had to turn the windshield wipers on. Stuff like that. Um... It breaks the suspension of disbelief for me. This doesn't present well because it doesn't have the paint. And it ends up looking more of a mainline piece than a masterpiece. You know, and if you're on the Patreon, then you know we've been kind of having a series of discussions about what it means to be a masterpiece. Um, this is one of those things that has a huge effect on that. Obviously, there is paint here because these are translucent pieces. Um, there's some paint on this stuff because it's a black piece. So like that piece back there is painted. This little ladder there, a step stool there is painted. Um, but that's that. Okay, so let's talk about this. So there is a soft ratchet here. It also swivels. And there is another soft ratchet here. The piston doesn't connect. Like, they can't have the moving piston. You know what I mean? So, like, when you go above it, it just pulls it right out of the... You know what I mean? Dumb. All right. And then you have a hard ratchet, so to speak, here, which actually feels quite nice. You have a swivel at this location, and then you have these forks, which mine are having a hard time kind of staying together. But let's talk about them. So they all rotate almost independently set of two one two two one two similar to the two one three and then you have the uh the, the whole so you can have the whole thing and this is like to pick lines mines out of the dirt or whatever right so then you have this and this they can separate and then you can have that unit spin it this way spin it that way you know, like there is a lot you can do with this. There's a playability aspect to this vehicle mode that is not lost on me in any way, shape, or form. I dig that part of it. Um, and I think that's all we have to really talk about regarding this unit. Um, the, 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 that bit is cool. Once again, looks plain. Would have really benefited from some paint. Uh, but, you know, what are you going to do? All right. Let's go ahead and get it transformed. So the two bumper pieces... Ouch. Come down and tab together. And this whole section flips up and then has to lock in. On the bottom, your armature needs to swing in and tab in. And the whole thing needs to swivel 180. So we need to disconnect these fender pieces here. They're pegged in right down here at the bottom. You can swivel that exhaust pipe out. And then this whole section there rotates to the bottom. That piece rotates in. And then this piece flips out. I think you want to have looking at the hollow. You want to be looking at the hollow bits, <clears throat> I believe. So we need to do the same thing on this side, but it's a little bit easier. Um, and that comes down as well. And then we want to disconnect the top from the bottom. You can go ahead and split the legs too at two locations. And We'll stop there. We need to collapse these uh, wheel wells. This one goes on that side, and this one just flips over to the bottom, and they sit underneath. Then this tire gets up and out of the way so that we can get access to this section, which flips out, and then flip the windshield in. You don't have to do that, but you're right there. We'll do the same thing on this side. This one comes up and over. This one comes in, this one swings down, they sit side by side, bring the tire up. Hmm. A little bit of a stiff little joint there. And then we're going to get access to this, bring that out, fold the window over, just so that we can get access to this to 
open up. And I think more of that is actually supposed to come up, but I could be wrong about that. Let me double check. No, we're good. I realized what I missed. Uh, just fold these pieces up underneath. All right. And what else? Okay, so we need to get this stuff up and out of the way. So this whole piece extends up and then this back piece will flip out and then this piece will swing out. Yes, but you have to put the tire back. You can get this kind of going there too. There, and then this comes up and over and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So the tire comes down, you can manipulate the tire a bit to get that piece up, you spin the tire will help, and then fold this piece out, and then this is on a double hinge, make sure that one hinge goes all the way up and the second one comes up and over. And now we need to split the arms. So take this, rock them down. The shoulder joints are actually here. You can rock them up. There's a piece back here that's hooked in. Take that down. There's another one here that's hooked up. Take that up. And then you can kind of just unfold these out. Take this piece, swing it in. And then take this piece and swing it up. And that will peg in. And then down here at the bottom, open up this panel. Open up those two panels. Open up these fingers so that you can get those fingers out and then swing these fingers back in you know i think it's actually they're a little bit out to the side but whatever you want you bought it you can do whatever you want with it so we're going to do the same thing on this side we're going to swing this piece in and then we're going to swing this piece up and over uh, i'll make sure that's pegged in properly later and then we have what's going on here This piece comes up, this piece comes up, fills in, these fingers come to, uh, uh, down, these fingers come out, and then these fingers can come back down for the ends. Real quick, I forgot to mention these pieces flip over as well. There's these two little circle things. Move them out to the outside. Move your arms down. And we need to get these tires on the opposite side of the shoulder and they kind of sit at an angle. God bless, it's a tight little joint. Oh, there. Okay. And then you have these two pieces, which will open up and come up and plug in to the center part of those tires. And then you can kind of shift. Well, let me do one other thing first. On this side, you want to... Once again, make sure these circle things are out of the way. Bring this up. And this up. And then you can sift or shift this whole portion of his body up. I'm ready for this thing to start coming together. Pull down on this piece, which will allow you to flip the head out to the opposite side. and then pull that back and then this piece comes up there's a little female port inside there and that will tab in as well now back here you have a female and male connection there and here and then these two pegs peg in there and you just had to be kind of mindful of all this junk 
Did I say junk? As you're doing it. These pieces come around here to the back. And these pieces come into the inside. And they marry up. I'm still having a bit of a hard time getting these to connect. There. That's that. And then I think these windows here just sit alongside it. Seems like there should be a peg for that to connect somewhere, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. There's these two struts on each end here. You want to make sure that they peg in to the wheels that are sitting up on the shoulder into the circular pieces. And then you also have these window pieces. There are multiple joints on those. As you curl them around, there's actually a little notch in the tire that they'll plug into on both sides, which is somewhat surprising, but also somewhat impressive. We had to get this leg situated. So you want to bring the thigh up so that that portion there sits along the top. Uh, unfortunately, as you do so, this piece has a tendency to want to slide to the bottom, so that has to go back the other way. I can't remember. I think this has to sit out here. And then open up this piece. There's a peg that goes into that tire. And then this piece comes around and pegs back into the hip. At that point, you can rotate the thigh 180. And then there's actually a fair amount of work to be done down here at the feet. So separate all this stuff, rotate the tire to the inside. There is a separate strut to support the weight on that side, which is pretty clever stuff. And then down here, these two pieces come out and snap into place on the sides to kind of fully realize the front of the foot and then this piece swings down so we're going to do the same thing on the other side we're going to rotate i feel like it helps it benefits to like see it twice sometimes we're going to rotate the hip down we're gonna i think that actually did a, oh no no because we have to rotate the hip up sorry and then rotate this piece to the back. We have to open up this so that that peg can meet up with the tire. Then this piece comes around, clips in, spin that 180 down here at the bottom. We got to open up everything that can open, spin the tire to the inside bring down our extra strut for support and let's see then these pieces come down and they marry up with the side components make sure that this is and these are supposed to be pegged in as well there and then they can marry up and then this heel little heel bit comes out and I think that all well, these pieces come out to the side there Woo! and that's it I'll clean them up we'll take a look at them so let's get in tight on the head sculpt for Dennis and I think it's pretty good you know given what it is uh, I think it's true to the design I guess I should stay should say so there's actually a hinge inside of the neck which allows for upward movement and a bit of downward movement but it does break up the sculpt here from the side but not the biggest deal in the world then the actual head itself can go side to side and then can also swivel so pretty nicely thought out in terms of kind of getting the job done in a very odd shaped head do you know what i mean we have the decepticon logo there and we have some really heavy-handed obvious and maybe a bit too on the nose weathering at additional places along the figure while we're right here at the front um we have a waist swivel so that works fine and then we'll go ahead and do the shoulders um 
Unfortunately, kind of deco-wise, there's not a whole lot more to talk about. These circ circular pieces are washed for whatever reason. I don't know if they like threw darts at a board to kind of figure out which ones they were going to paint and which ones they weren't, but they painted those. Shoulders are ratcheted. It's a soft ratchet out to the side. For a little shy 90 degrees, you might be able to get it. And then hard ratchet around for 360. We have a bicep swivel right above the elbow joint. We actually do have some paint there. We have some silver paint with then some lighter colored silver dry brushing on top, which actually does look good. We have a double jointed elbow. One joint's down there and one joint's up there, but it gets you the whole bend, which is nice. Wrist swivel. And then the fingers, the bottom two fingers do, um, obviously we saw during transformation, they move uh, not only forward and, and back, but in and out as well, which gives you a little bit of, of options there to kind of mess with. Let's go ahead and back out now. We'll look at the rest of the figure. Get these out of the way. So it's a softer plastic, um, <clears throat> not unlike, you know, what you, I guess what they normally do. You know what I mean? But it's a softer plastic than what I'm used to kind of working with. So some of this stuff doesn't stay tabbed in quite as nicely as I would prefer. That's a, that's a mean, nah, I think that's fairly objective, even though it's my preference. All right. So hips, we have nice ratchets forward and back for the full, <laughs> for the full Monty. This looks funny. And then an outward movement here, obviously, that will get you <laughs> the full Van Damme. Um, something else, isn't it? What will they think of bloody necks, you know what I mean? And then we have a, a knee bend that gets you 90 degrees. And ankles. I'm not sure. Oh, we have a little bit of a rocker there. So that's, that's nice. I'll take it. And no ankle tilt up or down. Um... Yeah, and I think that's, I think that's all there is, really, with this guy. Um, you know, I look. I think this is cool. I just don't think it's a masterpiece. Like, I think it's a really well done thing. I just don't think it's a masterpiece. Whatever it is, like, it just needs different branding. I don't like the branding of it because it doesn't feel like a masterpiece. But it feels like something good, just not a masterpiece. There it is from the back. Size comparison wise, I don't really have anything from this line, but there it is next to kind of a chug seeker, which comes up to about halfway. I mean, it's a large robot. So take into consideration shelf space and all that kind of stuff if you're thinking about picking this guy up. I broke a piece on Patreon recently. Um, a non-transforming piece, I'll have you know. Um, for what it's worth, some people think that, that it lowered the value counting the non transform but I break the non transformers so They're all a gamble, as I've said in another video just recently. Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives. The paint is like the biggest thing that screams in your face that's not right. Weathering on some of it, washes on some of it, dry brushing on some of it. It's inconsistent at best. It looks incomplete at least and gets an E for effort at most. My second issue with this is the materials choice. I'm just not a huge fan of softer plastics. I'm also not crazy about the accessory assortment. I love the forks and it might be true to the movie. You know, you might not have anything else, but like, you know, throw a gun in or something, something to kind of have them do a little bit or hold something or do something. Thing. The fire effects to me are just a waste. I get that they're doing like the Optimus Prime killing him thing, but I don't know. Bit much. Who's ever going to do that? You know what I mean? But yeah, those are my only my, my real only complaints is the paint and the materials. Moving on to the positives, the transformation is actually really cool. It's involved and it's complicated, but it's fun. And I just re looked at something recently, which was the opposite, except it was complicated, just not fun. But this is an example of kind of like professionalism of people that know how to make something complicated, but also know how to not make it frustrating. And I appreciate that. I think they did pretty well with the sculpt. I think the articulation is pretty much everything you'd want or need, surprisingly so, with the amount of bulk and sort of like awkwardness to the general shape and idea of the character design. I think it's impressive that they got as much articulation in as they did. So I think it's a, a decent enough figure, man. It's a recommend from me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.